Our next speaker is coming to us from Roy Grit. This is uh, Ruben Holmes, and he's going to be talking to us about monitoring open SIPs with Prometheus. I need two new yeah, that won't be handy. <laughs> and an elevator. Let's see. Understandable? Everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, my name is Ruben. I am from Spindle slash Forpgrid. Spindle makes the Forpgrid product, so I'm kind of with two hats on right now. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, monitoring OPSIPs with Prometheus. But before I do that, this is what we've been talking about the past two days. If the monitor keeps on, we all want to build the unicorn. We all want to make our, our infrastructure be impervious to damage, outages, uh, and make sure that if they happen, that we have some way to mitigate these issues. But those are, like Victor says, unicorn kind of scenarios. It's, it doesn't happen often that an outage of a, data, a full data center actually make sure that everything is still online and everything is working and your customers are all happy. Um, but what do you do if things do go wrong? Because that happens. Is this you? Are you just sitting down and thinking, ah, it's fine. Some customers are impacted, they can't make their calls, so what? Or do you have what you need in order to diagnose these issues? in order to see what is my system doing? Do you have all the log files? Do you have everything in one place? Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of touch upon observability. Because observability, as defined by Wikipedia, by the way, is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its, its external outputs, which is a whole mouthful. So I'm going to define it for, for myself. Um, observability for me has a couple of pillars. You have the logging, which we're all familiar with, because we're digging through log files almost daily, I think, um, which gives you very detailed information about a certain situation. What happened at a certain point in time, with which parameters, and how did it look like? Maybe even a little stack trace so you can see what part of the code it was happening in. Then you have, on the left, monitoring. And what I think is monitoring is metrics and alert rules, so pretty simple give you a global overview of the system and give you alerts when something actually hits the shit actually hits the fan. And on the left we have visualization. And visualization I mean making dashboards, making sure that you have them hanging somewhere or that you check them every now and then to see that things are still going as you were expecting them to do. And then last but not least is tracing, which I think is not that um, that big, but I with the Homer 7 presentation that we're going to be doing all of this stuff, which is great. Uh, which basically means something happens and goes through all these systems, system A to Z, but they're all scattered. You have log files here and you have a, a, a trace there, but you all want to gather them together and make sure that you have all that information in one place so you can see, hey, it's going wrong in process B uh, because an I.O. call is taking too long or a database call is taking too long. I just want to give you a warning because we're going to be talking about metrics mainly. I am addicted to metrics. If I can get metrics out of something, I will get metrics out of something. I started this very simple with some node metrics. How am I doing? What is my memory usage and my CPU? Uh, if I could, I would measure how many cups of coffee our coffee machine makes a day. So if anybody knows how to do that, please come see me after this. That's a little warning. 
So there are a lot of systems out there that do monitoring, so that do metrics and do alerting. And Prometheus is one of them, and we use Prometheus for about a year now. Uh, we started using Zabbix, but that didn't uh, really cut it anymore for us, so we thought we need something new. So we went to Prometheus. And Prometheus, at its very core, is the time series database. Can I, can I see some hands for who is already using Prometheus or has used Prometheus? There are <coughs> a few people who use it, that's good. <coughs> So at the very core, the, the time series database, as the name implies, <coughs> works with the time series that you insert in Prometheus. So it gives you functions, work with time sensitive data, makes you able to query over long periods of time in a very efficient, efficient way. And built around that time series database of Prometheus are its core features like the people metric. You need metrics in order to read it with it, obviously. And on the other hand, you have an HTTP server which has a web interface which you can then query your metrics out of, or just directly do that with. <coughs> so, how we set something up? This is a very, very, very basic Prometheus setup with six lines of YAML. We say that we want to scrape every 15 <coughs> seconds, and we have one job named OpenSIPS as a target. Is my OpenSIPS instance force 9484. So pretty simple. So what happens if we actually run this? Well, a Prometheus server every 15 seconds does a GET request on such metrics or the OpenSIPS uh, exporter that we just uh, um, said, and that will then retrieve metrics from the actual OpenSIPS instance and return them back to the server. Uh, exporter, for those who don't know, is Prometheus's term to say gets metrics out of some systems, so you have no exporters, and SQL exporters, RabbitMQ exporters, anything that exports metrics to Prometheus, basically. <coughs> this is what a metric looks like, one of many types of metrics. Start with a little help string to tell you <coughs> what is this metric amount. In this case, the total, total number of transactions for open chips. A type, this is a counter, well, as the name already implies, the counter can only go up from the NSP set. Things like how many requests am I getting to my web page, for example, is a counter. But you also have a different type, which is a gauge. And the gauge can go both up and down. Things like memory usage, for example, are uh, used for these kind of uh, uh, metrics. Then you have the metric itself, which is just a name. And then between the curly brackets, you can place labels. In this case, we say type is 2xx with a value uh, at the end of it. So very simple, but very <coughs> powerful in the way that you can query it, which I'll get to in a, in a bit, because of these labels and because of the way that it's set Right now, there are more than 500 exporters available. I checked yesterday. It's actually that much for most of the popular open source projects. Um, so if you have a piece of software running and you don't get metrics out of it yet, throw an exporter at it with, a, with Prometheus target, and you have metrics. So super simple. Uh, what Prometheus uses in order to query the, the metrics itself is called PromQL. And there's a couple of things that you can do with it, but most importantly, alerting and creating dashboards. Alerting because, yeah, if shit hits the fan and your metrics know about it, you damn well want to make sure that you have an alert rule for that. And on the other hand, you want to visualize what the overall status is of your application. So I'm going to do something that is not very nice. I'm going to do a live demo. I just sacrificed a PHP application to the demo gods. So let's hope that everything goes well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dashboard in Grafana. And I'm going to query some data out of Prometheus just to kind of drive the point home. I already have a lot of metrics available. And if I start typing, I get a big list of them. Let's just go for something simple like core apply cycle. This is actual uh, data from our production servers, by the way. Um, as you can see, because it's a counter, it's just going up and up and up and up. So it's not very insightful yet. But that's why you have a lot of functions in Prometheus. 
So for example, I want to know what is the per second rate of replies that I'm getting in total. I can apply the rate function. And then I need to make sure that I give a time window over the amount of data that it wants to look at to calculate that. So for example, I say I want five minutes of data and then calculate the per second rate of that. Well, that gives you a lot more clear overview of peaks and uh, 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 lows in your, in your graphs. But as you can kind of see, the labels and stuff like that, it's still a bit iffy because um, there's a lot of different ones in there and I just kind of want to see, let's say, one of our servers. So I can continue my query by saying I only want to have a certain instance. Let's say I want only this server. And it automatically filters out the rest <coughs> of, uh, of, the, of the metrics that it was querying for. Well, with Grafana and uh, Prometheus, you can very quite quickly and easily make these dashboards. So I think that's a, a big plus. Um, and I want to kind of show you as well, how do alert rules look like? Because just like the Prometheus uh, YAML file, this is also YAML, so a bit of configuration. You kind of have to learn what the labels are that you can apply and all that kind of stuff. But once you get it down, it's quite simple. So for example, we have an alert for when our OPSIPS goes down, which is obviously a bad thing. <coughs> with an expression, this is the query, OpenSIPS up, job is OpenSIPS equals zero. And if that happens for, if that's true for at least three minutes in a row, we will add a label with severity critical. Um, and we add a little description that says what happened, uh, what instance uh, did happen on, just a little bit of text <coughs> so that our alert manager can then uh, propagate those values and show them in a text message or a Slack message or whatever kind of <coughs> notification system that you've, you've got running. All right, so I kind of want to uh, bring it back to, uh, yeah, sorry, you have a question. Yes, I could. <laughs> okay, uh, you mean, you mean uh, like over here? Yeah, so this, for example. Uh, I this is all uh, available open source, so you can check this later <coughs> if you want as well. So for now, I kind of want to take it back to OpenSIPS because that's why we're all here, of course. Um, and the current state of the metrics within OpenSIPS. There's already been quite a lot of talks about people using this, um, but I just want to kind of uh, hit upon what you can do with it. There's, at least in 2.4, there's three ways to do it. You can open a Unix socket with the MI datagram module. You can do it XML over HTTP with the MI XML RDC module. And you could use a FICO file with the MI FICO module. I think 2.0 also has HTTP uh, JSON requests that you can send over it. Um, but the great thing is that each metric is listed and well documented, which makes it very easy and free to kind of use them as you please, and I, I, I've kind of seen in the presentation that a lot of people are already doing that. They're taking the metrics uh, uh, that, they, that they need and then exporting them through some other uh, some other system to work with that later. Um, but because we were using Prometheus and there was no way to kind of do this yet, uh, I wrote the OpenSIPS exporter. So it's very simple. It takes the metrics from the OpenSIPS management interface and it uses the diagram protocol for it. Uh, it transforms them into the Prometheus format that I showed you, and it exposes them on an HTTP endpoint. There are, at the moment, 63 metrics, because I'm taking all the metrics out of OpenSIPS, everything that is available, uh, uh, transforming them, and then exposing them. Um, so you can do a lot of things with these metrics to kind of, uh, monitor your systems a bit better. And it, yeah, just nice to notice it's written in Go. Uh, it also comes packaged with, like I just showed you, some alert rules examples. Uh, the dashboard we have a dashboard that we use internally, but because it's Grafana, you can just export it and import it into your own instance. So I've added that as well. You can just create a dashboard with this exporter, uh, and you can even filter for specific modules. So for example, if you only want to have 
the core modules uh, metrics or from some other module, you can uh, just do an HTTP request with a parameter that uh, specifies. So what does this do for us in production? Well, before this, we weren't very able to know what the impact was of some of our decisions that we made. Uh, for example, we used to have a situation where we got a lot of transactions going on at the same time, and we didn't <coughs> notice it until we started looking at our dashboard. And we saw that this increase was abnormal. It didn't happen before. So we found out what was wrong. We, we debugged the issue, and then after deploying it, we could immediately see that there was about a 50% decrease in the amount of transactions that we so it kind of uh, uh, reinforces uh, the assumptions that you make when you're writing code or you're trying to fix issues. And this is a little picture of that. So you can check it out on our GitHub page. I would say try it out, give it a spin, see if, uh, see if it works for you, um, see if Prometheus works for you. And to kind of round it off, I want to show the dashboard that we we're currently using for our OpenSips metrics. Is that big enough? Yeah? Right, so I can select what nodes I'm interested in. We've got quite a few, so let's just select this one that I have. Um, and then we can see some of the metrics that I was just talking about. Like, for example, we have currently have an issue with UDP children processing. Uh, that's reaching 100%, never good. Um, but that these kind of things are kind of visible at a glance from a dashboard like this. And all of the uh, statistics that you can, can kind of see here, like registrations per second, um, memory usage, um, how much memory there's free. There's, there, there's a lot in here. <laughs> so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna touch upon all of it. But the point is, um, that with just a little bit of effort, you can uh, definitely uh, improve how you monitor your OpenSips instances. That was all. Any questions? Or am I taking the MC's job now? I think it's just a build. <laughs> yeah, you can talk about jokes. <coughs> yeah. So, question now. No? Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much.